Hi, I'm Dr. Courtney with the QRC. Staying in shape takes a lot of work. On average, my workout program burns about 700 calories a day. I ride my bike over 1,500 miles a year. It takes planning and consistency and some effort every day. In the month of January so far, and it's only January 22nd, I've ridden my bike over 112 miles. Man, that'd be real hard to meet my monthly goal for average calories burned in a day if I waited till the last couple of days of the month. Math is the same way. If you wait till right before the GR to start working on your homework problems and figuring everything out, you're going to be in trouble. Just like if you waited till the last couple of days to start training for a marathon. A little math every day goes a long way. Alright, well we're not going to work the whole problem in detail, but we're going to outline the plan for section 13.1, number 41, and what we want is a plan of attack. And this problem has to do with two objects traveling through space along two different curves and the two different trajectories are given by the first uh, parametric vector function is given by t squared 7t minus 12 and that's the third component really t squared doesn't hurt to double check if things really aren't making sense yeah, the third component is t squared. I thought I'd written it down wrong. And the second vector function is 4t minus, oops, 4t minus 3, t squared, and 5t minus 6. And that's why a mathematician's value erases so much, because we make mistakes. All right. So let's talk about a couple of uh, key ideas uh, for working this problem. And one key idea is the distinction between intersecting and colliding. First, we'll take a little bit of an aside, but let's take that aside and talk about what it means to intersect. Intersection means that the two curves cross each other, but maybe, maybe not at the same time. And the way that we would solve the problem if it had asked about intersection is we would set r1 of t equal to r2 of s. And by naming the input parameter of the second vector field s rather than t, this enables us to solve for some values of s and t while they're in the same place, but it doesn't constrain the problem in such a way that s has to equal T. In other words, we might set x1 of t equal to x2 of s because that's what the first component of this vector equation means. This vector equation really has three scalar equations within it, and this is the first one, and this one would mean that t squared, the x component of r1, would be equal to the x component of r2 but then in terms of s, so it would mean 4s minus 3. And in a similar fashion, we could set y1 of t equal to y2 of s and go forward from there. And so what that would be is 7t uh, minus 12 equals s squared. And then the third equation would be from the z components, t squared equals 5s minus 6. So that would give us one, two, three equations. And the three equations are actually in two unknowns, S and T. And what's happening there, this is a circumstance in mathematics that's sometimes called an over-constrained system of equations, uh, such that you have more equations than you have unknowns. So it might not be possible to find values of s and t that satisfy all three equations. And what that would mean is it means that the, the 
two space curves don't intersect unless there's some value of s and t that satisfy all three equations. Um, all right, so then what does it mean to collide? And what colliding means is it means that the two vectors are in the same place at the same time. So in this case, there's only one parameter t. We don't have to introduce a second parameter s. So it means that x1 of t equals x2 of t. In other words, the x coordinates have to be in the same place at the same time. The y coordinates have to be in the same place at the same time. And the z coordinates have to be in the same place at the same time. Now the x equation would go ahead and give us uh, t squared equals 4t minus 3. The y squared would also give us an equation and the z, the y, saying the y coordinates equal to each other would give us an equation likewise with the z. So we have three equations and one unknown. The only unknown is t. So we'd solve each quadratic, find the two values of t that solve the x equation, the two values of t that solve the y equation, the two values of t that solve the z equation, and then if there's one value of t that solves them both, uh, then we know that there's a collision. If not, then there's no collision because we're not in the same place at the same time.